Hello and welcome back to Learn Linux TV and also welcome back to my Linux Crash Course series. In this series, I take you through one foundational concept around Linux one video at a time. And unless I let you guys know otherwise, you can watch these videos in any order you'd like. And specifically in this video, what I'm going to do is go over SSHFS. SSHFS is part of Fuse or File System and User Space, which aims to give you, the user, access and privileges to mount something yourself without sudo or root access. But more specifically, what SSHFS allows us to do is mount a remote file system that we have access to with SSH. We can essentially turn SSH into a mount utility to mount a remote folder locally as if it was a file share. On the server, you'll have a directory, either one you've just created or something that was already there. And then on your local machine, what you'll do is you'll mount that directory. And well, like I mentioned, that gives you the ability to treat a remote folder as a file share. So what I'm going to do in this video is go over SSHFS in all of its glory. I'm going to give you all the examples that you'll need to be productive with SSHFS by the end of this video. So it's going to be a lot of fun. I'll have time codes down below that you can use to go right to the section that you're most interested in. And I'm really excited about this video because SSHFS is one of my favorite technologies. Now, unfortunately, SSHFS is having a little bit of trouble right now, but we'll go over that later in the video. Definitely stay tuned to the end of the video to see how you can help. Now, before we get into the topic at hand, which of course is SSHFS, what I need to do right now is take a moment to mention the sponsor for this entire series, Linode. And yes, they've sponsored the entire series, which is awesome. Now, what is Linode, you might ask? Well, Linode is a cloud platform that specializes in Linux. You could use their service to spin up your very own Linux server in minutes. And you could even use that server for, well, whatever you'd like. Whether you want to, I don't know, spin up a blog, a Nextcloud server, your own VPN service, the possibilities are endless. But even if you don't have anything in mind that you'd like to run on a Linode server, it's also a great platform for the series because you can use Linode's platform to spin up a Linux instance for learning and practicing commands as you work through the content that's available in this course. And every distro that I've covered in this series is available on Linode's platform. If you don't have an account yet, check out the URL that you see on the screen right now. You could use that URL to create a new account with $100 in credit to get you started. And that credit is good for up to 60 days. And by checking out the service, you're actually supporting Learn Linux TV, so I'd really appreciate it if you check them out. And the sponsorship between Learn Linux TV and Linode is the real deal. Linode is the official cloud provider for Learn Linux TV, and that's been the case for several years now. In fact, I've been using Linode since before they became a sponsor of this channel. Thank you so much to Linode for sponsoring this series, as well as other videos on this channel. I really appreciate it. Now, with all of that out of the way, let's go ahead and dive into SSHFS. So, I'm ready to get started. But before I do, I want to talk to you guys for a moment about what SSHFS actually is. Now, I did mention some information around SSHFS during the intro, but let's go a little bit deeper. First, you should be already familiar with SSH itself because SSHFS is actually dependent on it. I have several videos on this channel that covers SSH, even a full guide if you're interested. So check out the links in the description below if you want to check out those videos. But you don't have to be an expert with SSH in order to use SSHFS. If you know how to connect to a server via SSH, then you're good to go. As you're probably aware of already, SSH allows you to connect to a remote server and execute commands for that server to carry out. It's actually the closest thing to a default remote management solution that we have in Linux today. When it comes to SSHFS or SSH file system, it gives you the ability to mount a remote folder locally. For example, if you have a Linux server and a local workstation, you can actually mount a folder on your Linux server to a local folder on your workstation, and the end result isn't all that different from mounting an NFS or Samba share. SSHFS is actually part of Fuse, which stands for File System in User Space. The goal of Fuse is to allow even users without root access to mount remote file systems 
without needing system-wide access. And since SSHFS requires the user to already have access to the remote server, that means that the network administrator will need to set up access to the remote server first, which also means that SSHFS isn't responsible for the permission, it's just basically piggybacking on top of SSH. Let's go ahead and see it in action. So for today's example, what I have right here is a workstation. You can see that from the name. Well, actually it's not, it's just a virtual machine, but we're not gonna get into that. We'll just pretend that this is actually a workstation. And here we have a Linux server. It's another VM, but today it's going to play the role of a Linux server. And the goal is to mount a directory that exists here on the server and mount it locally to the workstation. And we're going to do that with SSHFS. But first, we're actually going to need to have the SSHFS command available to us in order for this to work. And to find out whether or not you already have that, we can run command-v, and then the command that we want to inquire about, which in our case is going to be the SSHFS command. I received no output at all, which means that I actually don't have this installed. So in order for us to continue, I will need to install this package. And it's really easy to install. In my case, what I could do is run sudo apt install. This command is valid for Debian and Ubuntu systems. And specifically what I could do is install SSHFS. That's the name of the package on Debian and Ubuntu systems. It's also the name of the package on Arch Linux if that's what you're running. And if you're running something like Fedora or a Red Hat based system, then the name of the package is actually going to be different. So for example, if we were on such a system, we would run DNF and then install and the package in that case would be called fuse-sshfs. And since I'm on an Ubuntu system, that command will not work for me. What I need to do is run sudo apt install sshfs. Again, that's the package name on Debian and Ubuntu systems, so that's what I'll do. I'll install that. That was super quick. So as you can see, this particular utility is very small. It's not even a single megabyte. Now it's time to show you guys some examples of SSHFS in action. We're absolutely going to need access via SSH to the other server. So what I'm going to do is just click on this tab here. I'll type IPA to get the IP address of this server. In my case, it's 10.10.10.232. We could use a fully qualified domain name if you have one, or even a host name if your firewall has dynamic DNS. But we will need to use one of those. In my case, I'm just going to use the IP address and keep it simple. Now, before I go ahead and mount a directory via SSHFS, I mentioned earlier that plain old SSH is required for this to work. So before we go any further, we do need to make sure that we can use SSH to connect to the other server. And to do that, I'll type SSH and then the IP address that ended in .232. So I'll press enter. I'll type in my password for the user on the remote end. And as you can see, I'm logged into the server. So I think it's safe to say that SSH actually works just fine. So we could check that box, we're good to go. So what I'm going to do on my end right here is I'm going to create a local directory that I'm going to use to mount the remote directory. So I'll simply type mkdir and what I'll do is I'll just name this directory remote underscore documents. And we can see it right there. It's currently empty, that makes sense. I just created that folder after all, but we have everything we need right here. But we do need a directory on the server side of things, something to actually mount. And right now, I have no directories whatsoever. Now you don't actually have to create directories inside your home directory. You can create the directory somewhere else if you'd like. But to keep it simple, I'm just going to mount something in the home directory, but right here, I need to actually create a folder. I have nothing here, so what I'll do is type mkdir, and then I'll name this particular directory documents. Clever, right? So we have a documents directory, and of course it's empty. So now we have everything we need. We have SSHFS installed. I verified that I can connect to the other server via SSH, so that box is checked. And I have a remote folder that I've created that I want to mount on my local workstation that I want to mount right here. And I've already created a directory here on my workstation that I'm going to use to mount the remote directory. Let's go ahead and do it. 
Now to set that up, I'm going to type SSHFS. My username on the remote end is J at 10.10.10.232, colon, and then I type the path to the directory that I want to mount locally, the remote directory basically, and that's going to be under slash home slash J. And what I did was I called that documents. And where I want to mount that to is my local directory, the one that I just created, and I called it remote documents. So if this works, when I press enter, I'm actually going to have a mount between the two directories, the local one and the remote directory, and it's going to be awesome. So let's see if I actually typed everything correctly. I'll press enter. It's asking me for my password. And this is the same as my SSH password. And if I didn't know any better, I would think that maybe the command worked. There's no output. But if I type the mount command, we can actually see at the very bottom, we have a mount to the directory on the other server. You see the file system type is fuse.sshfs. You see the username, the IP address, all of that information. So let's do a quick experiment. The folder is still empty. And it's empty here as well. And since I have a mount between the two directories, whatever I do in one, I should also have done to the other automatically because, well, they are mounted. So if I do, I don't know, touch, and then documents slash test file dot txt. Simple example. On the server, I now have an empty text file called test file dot txt. And then here on the local workstation, if I list the storage again, we can see I have the same file. And that makes sense. This directory is actually a mount to the directory on the other end. And inside that directory, I created a file. And just like any other file share that you might mount, and just like any other file share, you're going to see the contents of the directory and it's going to be the same on both. And using SSHFS, you're actually able to mount any directory that exists on the server that you have access to but one thing that you can't do is mount something that you don't have permission to access. So if you try to, I don't know, mount root's home directory, that's not going to work. As long as you have access to it via SSH, you should be good to go. But if you don't, then you're just going to get an error. Now, what I want to do is unmount that directory. As we've discussed in a previous video in this series, if you've already seen it, we generally would use the umount command to unmount a mounted directory. And the directory in particular, again, was the remote documents directory. So I want to unmount that. So I'll press enter and let's check the status. There's nothing inside. If I run the mount command, that particular mount is no longer listed. So I was able to simply unmount that directory. So I'm going to mount it one more time. And what I want to do is show you the dedicated command for unmounting a directory that you have mounted via SSHFS. And that command is f user mount dash u and then the directory. And that does basically the exact same thing. Now you might actually get an error message if you tried to unmount it with the normal means. It depends on your configuration. That might actually fail and that's okay. The f user mount command with the dash u option is how we would normally want to unmount a directory that's mounted via SSHFS. That's because this allows us to use the fuse tools to facilitate this particular task. Now, one thing that I want to do, though, is I want to go ahead and make this a little bit easier. If you're going to be using SSHFS, you should definitely consider creating an SSH key. I would argue that you should do that regardless. That's just a good practice. You shouldn't be using SSH or anything that's based on SSH without a key. It adds additional security, and that's a great thing to have. There's also a bit of a convenience when it comes to having a key because it actually will simplify the process of mounting a directory because it won't ask us for the password. Now I have entire videos on my channel that goes over the concepts surrounding SSH keys and I highly recommend you check them out because if you only use the information that I'm giving you in this video, then we're doing a disservice to SSH keys because there's a lot more to it than what we're going over today, but it is a related topic, so I definitely wanted to add that. Anyway, what I'll do is run the ssh-keygen command, and I'm just going to accept all of the defaults. I'll press enter. And what this is going to do is create a new SSH key. And the default path 
is the one that you see right here. Inside your home directory, underneath the .ssh directory, it wants to create your SSH key as ID underscore RSA. Now be careful because if you already have a key here, this will wipe it out and you might not want that. I know for a fact on my end that I don't have a key here, so I'm good. There's nothing for it to overwrite, but just double check that you actually don't have a key already before you continue or you might regret it. Now on my end, I'll just press enter. For the passphrase, I'll leave that blank. I highly recommend that you use a passphrase, but for me, I'm just going to skip that for now to keep this video simple. I'll press enter again, and now we have a key. Specifically, we have the ID underscore RSA private key and the ID underscore RSA dot pub public key. Now that we have a key, what we could do is run SSH hyphen copy hyphen ID dash I for the input file. And then inside your dot SSH directory, we have our SSH key right there. And then we type the username, the at symbol, then the IP address for the remote server. And this is the IP address in my case right here. So I'll type in the password. And it says number of keys added one. But what's exactly changed? Well, let's go ahead and SSH into that server and find out what exactly is different. So as you can see, I was able to SSH directly into that server without a password prompt. And that's pretty cool. So now, as a consequence of that, if I recall the SSHFS command that we've used most recently, which should be this one right here, I'll press enter, and that's it. I have it mounted, just like that. One command, no password, it just, well, works. At least I think it works. Yeah, it works. I see it right there at the end. It's mounted. That's pretty cool. So as you can see, SSHFS is very useful. The ability to use something like SSH as a you know drop-in replacement for NFS or Samba, that's really cool. Now to be fair, SSHFS is not a complete replacement for NFS and Samba, but in some use cases, it might very well be. On my end, just to give you an idea of where SSHFS fits into the global you know ecosystem of mounts and sharing and things like that, I use it for one-off mounts, basically something that I want to mount for a specific task, maybe not something long-term, just something for, you know, right now to get something done. If I'm going to be mounting something regularly on into the future, I'll probably use NFS for that, but SSHFS is a great on-demand service or utility for mounting something in the short term, and I love using it for that. Now, earlier in the video, Specifically during the intro, I mentioned that SSHFS has run into a bit of trouble, specifically Fuse itself. The project, when I went to look for it, is now abandoned on GitHub. The maintainer stepped down. There's nobody actually watching SSHFS. Now for that reason, I can't actually recommend that you transfer anything that is proprietary, secure, protected, so don't, you know, put your company's details in an SSHFS mount or transfer your budget spreadsheet or anything like that. It's probably fine, at least for now, as of the time I'm recording this video. But unless a new maintainer comes around and takes over the project, it's really hard for me to recommend it for anything other than, you know, non-confidential purposes. Because if there's no maintainer, there's always the possibility there could be a security issue. Now, hopefully this is going to be rectified soon. I mean, this is a developing story right now, so I really don't know how exactly that's going to go down, but I have no hesitation when it comes to recommending SSHFS for, like I mentioned, non-confidential things. And SSHFS, like I mentioned a few times now, is awesome and I love it, so hopefully it offers value for you as well, and if it has, and if this video has offered value to you, then I, well, would appreciate it if you click that like button. That lets YouTube know that you liked this video, and by doing that, you are telling YouTube that you think other people might benefit from this knowledge as well, and that would be awesome. Anyway, thank you guys so much for checking out this video. I really appreciate it, and I'll see you again very soon.